All right. SHF, Masked Rider Odin and Gold Phoenix was just released, um, I believe, last week. And I had it on order at AmiAmi. And I shipped it fast and got it uh, Wednesday? Thursday? I don't remember what day I got it. This week. And, spoiler, it's awesome. Um, nice box, you know, great art on it. I like the foil lettering, glare from my lights, stuff like which cards it comes with, what. It comes with everything, basically. Because it's one of the great ones, one of the three, four now, Ryuki releases that come with the Mirror Monster, the Contract Beast. Um, let's start with this thing that I've already got loose, because I've, of course, been playing with it. All of the Contract Monsters come with a stand. And it's also nice and foil, and so it's hard to get it to look right, but shiny Phoenix stand. <coughs> And here we have Odin and Gold Phoenix in their trays. Let's, um, as you can see from the accessories, we've got a bunch of hands. Splayed open hands and other open hands and two different kinds of gripping hands. I think these are the same ones that came with Tiger. We've got the holding it straight and the holding it angled forward. For the swords and only one right hand for card holding doesn't have a left hand like Tiger did. Um, and I, though I have been playing with this for the last few days, I don't even know what this stuff is for yet. I'm gonna have to get out the instructions. He's got two swords. He's got a cool staff, which I think is his. his uh, what do they call it? The card visor. Does it have a name? Of course it does. But the packaging is written in Japanese, so I don't know what it's going to be called. There's his cards. I believe it comes with six cards. Because if we pull out the box again, it's going to come with Advent to summon whoop, Advent to summon Phoenix and apparently one called Eternal Chaos and one called Sword Vent and Guard Vent and Final Vent and it seems like there should be one more. I don't know what this stuff is. I haven't finished Ryuki yet. I need to do that one of these days. <clears throat> Alright, so... Common Rider Odin. <clears throat> is a really great color scheme. Uh, I think Tiger's probably my favorite, with the blue and the silver. But this is really good. The brown is kind of metallic-y. <clears throat> the... Everything else is a nice gold color, and it all goes really well with the black. He's got interesting things on his back. Um, he's got things that make me think of Ryuki gun forms, dragon face on there. His shoulder pads, there are two distinct bits to them, individually jointed, which is neat, and lets him have some good motion. You can get his arm up. Oh, you can pop that thing right out. It's just a teeny little ball joint, so you pop it back in. I like the, uh, I don't know, teeth? Claws? Probably claws, huh? Because he's a bird. That come down on the lower end of the chest. I like the head. I think it's a cool design. His uh, card... Uh, whatever it's called, card deck. So what else does he come with? Let's get his visor. It's a neat staff that closes up. And it's... Is it in focus? Um, it's got a phoenix motif, of course, because that's what his contract beast is. So it opens up. And it slides down or up, something like that, to put a card in it. Click. Great, huh? Now, my problem with this thing is that grip, the handle. It is very tight to get in. I've only put it in the left hand, straight up and down hand. And honestly, it was a pain to get in because if you can see 
Look how much the thumb overlaps the fingers. There you go. So you have to push that entire wide thing around it to get it in. Uh, maybe this one will be easier because the slightly angled forward hand, the thumb does not overlap the fingers as much. Uh, I actually found it easier to go in down below a little bit and then slide it up because there's it's a much smaller shaft to get his fingers around. Of course that didn't sound dirty, right? Oh, and it disassembles. Okay, there we go. And it is a f goes in only one way. Again, like all of the Ryuki figures, the hands are not terrible at all to pop on and off. I have to <coughs> this camera setup is not ideal. There we go. Let's see, he also comes with... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, swords. Let's grab one of those and... <coughs> Excuse me again. Sword, nice and two-tone gold and metallic brown, nice and rigid plastic, pointy, probably pointy down here too. You could cut yourself if you were careless, which I clearly am, so come on, there we go. Now he's got a sword too. Click. Like I said, I haven't seen this guy in the show, so I don't know how he uses his things. I don't know if he can use one at a time or if, he's, if he has to use both of them or what, but this is just a demonstration, so there we go. Um, let's pull out Phoenix. tail pops off because guard vent and it just snaps right on two pegs come on there we go now I should have pulled it out because I have this the writers and monsters or so Chaco Henshin um, Phoenix um, and I should go get it because it would be interesting to compare to this but let's just say it's nowhere near as good it is cool looking it it is brown instead of metallic brown the gold is a you know a flat yellowish color, goldish color rather than a nice shiny gold that the figure arts is. Um, this thing is cool and it's rather large. I mean, it's large like him. Um, if we pull him out of the way, the wings, or rather the swords, just plug in nicely right here. And on mine, one sword. It's that one. Doesn't like one side for some reason. It's okay on the other side. It's still a little bit loose over here. But that particular sword, for whatever reason, does not like being on that side. Check out how articulated this guy is. <clears throat> this thing goes up and down. This part goes up and down a little bit. Not as much. Oh, yes, quite as much. The The wing itself goes up and down, turns flaps forward and backwards. The legs have a ball hip with not a whole lot of in and out motion. And then a knee. The claws are both individually hinged so they can go up and down distinctly. This is on a little bit of a rotation. Oh, And these were so tight up until... See, this one does not move. And I'm afraid of... I might have to stick it in the freezer to get that one popped off broken free so I can turn a little bit. Um, what else? The neck has a little bit of motion. The exact amount depends on whether or not the shield remains on. It does pop off a little bit easy when you grab the tail, mainly because the tail's hinge is pretty firm. So it doesn't have a whole lot of motion either, so you, it's very easy to just pop it right off of the back there. It stays on if you're not messing with it. 
Now, this also comes with a Tamashi stage, as previously demonstrated, and this neat little adapter, rectangular shaped, that has a hole right there for plugging into the Tamashi stage. Pop the shield off. That peg plugs into that hole. Boink. But it does it the other way. So that that ledge hooks onto there so you know it's lined up straight. So that you can put the bird back on. And now, so I can do it without actually looking in there. Nope, I can't. And now your gold phoenix can be back heavy and make the stand fall over. This totally worked great for me at work all week. And I didn't have any problems and I never knocked it over once, I'm sure. It's now just the the handle that adjusts the tripod up and down just sticks into my shoulder here and I can't. There we go. Big golden brown bird on a stage flying. See how good the two look together, how much space they can take up. So there are also these other bits. They swap out um, arm guard dealy, what's it? Which you just pop this off and it should be that either side is removable. And you put this one back on in its place. And of course, I should try and do it on camera. And you see it has a post. I should probably take the staff out of his hand before he falls and break something. Let's put a let's put the jazz hand on his left hand. That's always fun. So now with the alternate uh what you call it on there? Why is it so dark? Lighten up. Let's see if I can adjust the lighting here. Hold on. There we go. With the alternate peg on there, we pop Phoenix off the stand. Boink. And remove this part. Which is a little... It's nice and snug, which means Phoenix is only going to fall off the stand if the bird comes to attach from this part. So now this middle peg can attach to that peg. I can't do this without sticking my hand in the way. Now he has a shield. And it's a rather large shield. I don't know how he actually holds it in the show, as I've said. Um, but one nice thing is these forearm dealies are actually articulated. Um, he has both a bicep swivel and a forearm swivel. So you can try and rotate it and do something funny with it. Like I said, I don't know how he's supposed to use it, but that's one way he can do it. Via that forearm guard. Which I can't do with the camera poking me in the shoulder. Let's pop that off. The other way he can hold the shield is with this little gadget here, which is clearly a handle. That also plugs into there. So you could, oh, hey look, karma, or foresight, or I don't know what you call it. R and I smart. That hand works. So you can hold the shield. I should adjust the feet so he stands up, but again, Ryuki figures have die cast feet which means they're a little, their center of gravity is a little bit further down the figure. So they are very good at balancing. So even though I don't have the feet angled flat on the floor or the table, <coughs> he stands up. Look at that. Isn't that great? I think so. The other thing you can do is with this doohickey which is funny looking, but if you have night, it may look somewhat familiar. The instructions say to, <clears throat> to 
to fold things up a little bit more. Fold the head back. What am I supposed to do with his legs? I guess you just put the shield back on. And it shows both swords on there, so we'll do that too. Even though it just gives an extra sharp pokey bit. I guess I didn't talk about the beautiful sculpting on Phoenix. I like the detail work. I like the red and blue gems. I don't know if it means anything. I like these wings. Again, rigid, sharp, pokey plastic, so not for kids that aren't smart enough to know not to scratch themselves with sharp plastic. Come on. Yes. Now, this looks like I need to pop his nipples off. Don't ask me how I'm going to do that. There we go. Not terrible at all. Okay, this one's a lot harder. There we go. And so, these two pop in there. If you notice, those gold ones look awfully similar to these gold ones. So if we pop these out, or rather, this back, entire back gold piece off, this pops right in there. And now, Odin has a really heavy, but really cool looking cape. Or, I don't know why, but he does. But it is very heavy. <clears throat> it is going to throw off the balance of the figure significantly. He can still stand, though, because Ryuki figures are great. But I also noticed that that, that got funnily misaligned. Okay. If you can see it, there's a little black spot in there. It looks to me like you can just shove the stand bit right up there. And now he can fly. Let's give him some forward looking. Now we've got an Odin on a stand with a cool phoenix cape. So, kind of like uh, Knight. <clears throat> However, unlike Knight, which I have not reviewed myself, and I haven't watched too many other reviews of him, so I don't know if everybody's is like this, but mine, this connector piece on Knight that holds... Darkwing 2, Knight. It does not like to stay in one or the other. I don't remember if it's the figure it doesn't like to stay in or if it's the bat that it doesn't like to stay connected to, but <clears throat> it just pops out quite easily. This one is nice and solid. Let's see how solid. There we go. Now it's a lot harder than I would normally shake a toy that only had those two little itty-bitty pegs connecting them. But it's... I mean, it's plenty firm. I'm not at all concerned that it fell off at that point, finally. Let's see if I can stop bumping the camera. Anyway, I think I've dragged this on quite long enough. Um, in summary, like all the Ryuki figures, Odin and Gold Phoenix is a great purchase. It is a retail release. It just came out last week. Uh, I believe retail price was 3,300 yen, which was the yen has or the dollar has dropped in relation to the yen over the last month or so so i think that was more like around thirty five dollars not as good a price as we were getting a month or two ago but still for thirty five dollars for the price of two dcucs the last time i was buying dcucs this thing is so much better um, this is far better well okay a voyager transformer is still can still be pretty good but I'd much rather have this. You just look at how awesome that is. So, definite recommend from me. Thank you for watching.